What's going on guys? Hope you're doing well. Michael Bamba here and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the weekend in the life of a trader. But before we get into the video I think it's important to realize that not every trader's routine is going to be different so my routine is going to be different from other traders. Yours may be completely different. Mine's not perfect but we're going to dive into it and mainly focus on the processes and the routines in, in regards to preparation for next week. So it's going to be good. I think I'm going to keep this mainly trading specifically. The reason being is that you know, if I was to do a full breakdown in my weekend routine, it's probably going to be a 60 minute video. So I don't think everyone's going to appreciate that, but I'm going to keep this trading specific and focus on the routine. So with that in mind, let's get into some prep for next week. So how I like to usually start off my weekend prep on a Friday evening is to start off with the DXY, which is the US dollar currency index. And this is going to give me an overall gauge on the dollar related pairs for the week ahead, um, gain some clarity on the structure, what I'm looking for in terms of buying or selling opportunities, which is going to give me a, a clear direction on all the dollar related pairs, such as your dollar, pound dollar, kiwi dollar, you name it. So that's going to be insightful. Next, what I'm going to be doing is working my way through all 28 different pairs on the currency list within the foreign exchange market, gain some clarity, look through those. Um, and then go through a couple of other different markets such as the cryptos. So I'm going to go through Bitcoin, Ripple and Ethereum and then a few pairs on other markets such as the S&P 500, um, oil, um, gold, silver, natural gas and maybe a couple of others as well. Going through each pair, my focus is not too much to forecast on the Friday evening. It's more so to gain direction in the market and analyze different pairs. So I'm going to be focusing mainly on the high time frame structure and then once I've then done that, going to go down to the four hour, the one hour and gain some clarity on potential setups for the week ahead. After that, I'm going to be forming two watch lists for the week ahead. So the main one is going to be top six. So exactly how it how it sounds. Um, so my top six pairs for the week ahead filtered out of the other pairs based on their structure, how clean the setups are and the overall high time frame where price action is right now. In terms of my other watch list, which is called the wild cards, this is going to be two to four pairs roughly on average are pairs that don't quite make the top six for reasons as such as the setups may not be as clean or the higher time frame structure may not be inbound or they just need, may need a little bit more development and not quite ready. So with that in mind, I put two to four pairs on there um, just to filter out and keep an eye on through throughout the week. Um, I won't put too much focus on these, but I'll keep coming back to and make sure that I'm prepared if those setups do arise. So that's pretty much it in terms of the process for Friday evening. So let's get into it right now. Sometimes we forget why we're here. Oh. It's easy to fall off track. Oh. These help us remember. Oh. These battle scars don't look like the fate. Don't look like they're ever gone away. They ain't never gonna change. These battle Growing up, I had a dream, something no one else could see. Tell me what it means when your faith is falling beneath your knees and you can't breathe. Everything you see reminds you of what you're not or something you won't be. You gotta take what you're given, that's how we So I've just finished up essentially with my part one routine. So basically what I've done, what I do is I go through each of the pairs and as I'm going through, any pairs that kind of take my interest, then I'll flag it. So we have a tool on TradingView, which is quite useful, so you can flag different pairs. So you can see with here, right? Um, you can flag it with either red, orange, green, purple, blue. And any pairs that are flagged in the, in the red, as you can see, these red, red pairs here, these are very likely to be on my top six watch list. Any pairs that I flag in orange is basically my wild card. So this week, what have I got? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven red pairs flagged so far. So I need to get this down to six. So what I'm going to do is import all these into this watch list here on my top six. And then what I'm going to do is filter out the best top six and get rid of that seven pair. So I'll probably end up likely putting that in my wildcards. So without further ado, I'll do that and then join you back here in a couple of minutes time. Mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business. Not because they want to do it, just because they heard it pays and who the fuck wants to be poor knowing that's how we've been raised. Society is getting heavy, I can feel the weight. The pressure of success is like a hundred million pounds of shame. And that's the reason I'm staying up late, trying to find a way to escape. The stereotypes this day and age is making me feel 
like the only way I'll be happy is getting signed to a label and making money through rapping. I want to share my emotion because this world is attacking the very principle of life. That so looking at the dates why in the top six, so just a quick run through. I'm not going to break down every pair because it will take me a while and I want to focus this video more so on the process just to that's going to provide more value. So in regards to the dates why, just looking for continued downside if you look at the daily chart. This is quite a steep correction right now. So the, the area that I'm pointing at right here is this area here. So it's that quite a steep correction, which may actually form just a deeper structure to push to the upside longer term. So that's gonna be interesting. But for right now, looking for short term sales to see how that develops. Euro dollar, inverse correlation to the DXY of course, looking for more upside. So quite a complex pattern. It's definitely not the cleanest and it's definitely not, it's more so in a valid area right now. So it's not one of my favorites for the week ahead, but ultimately looking for more upside to complete the structure. So I think if we do get that heavy momentum that commits to the upside, we'll likely at least achieve this target here. However, that doesn't have to happen. There's a few variations that may happen and we may get something on the long lines of this. So we may actually form this type of structure in which we, if we just rein this back in, this actually becomes a pattern of its own. So we get the one, two, third touch, which actually could trickle up to here, form the double top and then drop. Um, the reason I say that is because within a pattern, what do we usually get? I've said this on previous videos, right? Within a completion of a pattern, we have three sections. So we have the impulsive move up here, which is outlined there. Then we get the deeper correction, like so, which acts as the middle section in the pattern, which is what we call it. Then we get the final move up, which often can be impulsive, but ultimately it doesn't change the structure, 80-20 rule. And then looking back at that in hindsight, if that develops, let's say we get something along the lines of this, right? If we look back in that on hindsight, and then that drops, let's say we get something like this, right? And then we get this scenario play out, right? We can look back in that in hindsight and be like, cool, well, we got one, two, three, impulse correction as the middle section, the final move up, which creates that one, two, three, three sections within pattern, move to the downside. So that's what I'm looking at on your dollar. Obviously it hasn't developed yet, but just forecasting ahead of time. Just for right now, just looking for buying opportunities. So that's looking interesting. Dollar Swiss at an incredible area of value right now, matched up with the DXY for selling opportunities. So basically, and this can actually creep up a little bit higher. So on the daily chart, we're at the outer structure at the bigger double top. Right, if we drop to the one hour. Now I was actually looking at this today, but we didn't quite get my desired entry. So basically we've got the one, we had the one, two, three, broke through, retraced. Didn't get involved in that just because of how close it was to the double top. So happy to wait on this. So this can either create a continuation and drop from here, or what I'm looking at is if this just creates a middle section within the pattern, pushes up one more time, right? Then these are the areas of value that I'll be looking at. Why? Because you have to think of the psychology of this, right? And I've talked about this so many times right now, but my psychology of the market. If we think of it from a, a, mess, a, a mass perspective of central banks around the world, right? Where are the sellers are gonna be coming into the market? At the value areas, at the double tops, right? Well, what happens if that breaks slightly, catches people on the wrong side of the market and then the trades go? That can definitely happen. So we have to prepare for both. So ultimately looking for the double top, but if we break higher, I know how, how to react because it's all about number one, how price breaks the double top and what happens next. So do, if we do break the double top, right? Let's just say this moves up. If we break the double top, then do we form a correction, which will be corrective in nature, then push to the upside or do we create an ascending nature or retrace, right? And then form continuation, and then move to the downside. So without getting too complicated, it is about the mass cycle of the market. And yeah, very interesting to see how dollar Swiss plays out. Looking at pound Aussie, basically looking at the bigger sell. So we're at an, an incredible area of value right now. We've got the one, two, three, four, essentially fifth touch. And we've broken this high here with the double top. So once again, mass psychology of the market being activated here, dropping to the lower time frames. Just using pattern separation here because we can it's so easy to get confused. So we've got one, two, looking for the third touch. We can see once again like your dollar move up correction as a middle section. Can this move up, form an ascending nature, then I'll be looking at the risk entry and then the first correction within the move to then take that shot. So that's looking interesting. One of my favorite plays for the week ahead. Pound CAD, just basically looking for, see a little on the higher timeframes. 
This can actually develop into a different pattern, but ultimately looking for this on lower time frames. So looking to see if we get to these areas of value at this double top, create this bigger arc and double top, and then we'll likely drop from there. Or if we break a little bit higher, then happy to catch the risk entry from the top. So that's interesting. Dollar yen, very similar to dollar related pairs in the respect that looking for more downside. So I think that based on this structure, this will likely just move up, create a third touch within the pattern, and then I'll get involved in the sell from here to the downside. Or if this breaks up higher, creates an ascending formation at the top of the outer structure, then that we're in, we're, in, we're in for an incredible sell there. So that's looking interesting. And Euro pound, lastly, bit of a wild card, but at the same time, we're in a, a value area to be looking for buyers. So bigger double bottom on the higher time frame structure, drop into the one hour chart, just looking at this in the form of isolation. We've been correcting here for multiple weeks now. So six plus weeks, this has been corrective, arcing its way around to this double bottom area, right? And then on the, on the one hour chart, we've got, once again, pound pairs and dollar pairs looking really good for next week. So we've got one, two, looking at that third touch, which happens to coincide nicely with that double bottom. There's a reason for that. And then we get the one, two, three, middle section within the pattern, move down before the bigger buy. So I'll either be looking for the risk entry or the first impulse to confirm the move, then the correction, and then take that long. So that's looking interesting, but we have a fire watch list for next week. So I'm really keen to see how this develops. Um, so it's looking really nice. So that is pretty much the Friday night prep done as day one of three. So Saturday and Sunday are gonna be getting into forecasting specifically rather than analysis. So that's gonna be good. Prepare for next week, it's looking fire. One thing to mention as well is that, right, what time is it now? Uh, just gone half eight, so it doesn't apply too much, but like, how do you word this, right? It's the fact that no one sees this, right? It's Friday night, I could so easily be out, 22 years old, could be so easy out partying, and I'm nothing against that or anything like that, but in order to become successful, right, you need to sacrifice things. This has been my sacrifice since I started my journey at the beginning of 2017, back in the 2016. So you have to just commit to it. Like you have to put in the work, as cliche as that sounds. Um, and I'm in here like pretty much every weekend, bar like one or two, three, four maybe towards the end of the year. But like, this is what it takes. Obviously I'm not successful just yet. Things are developing nicely, but at the same time, I'm not successful just yet. But you're seeing the journey, right? You're seeing me go from absolutely nothing to then developing as a person, developing as a trader. So this is what it takes. You need to, you know, it takes so much dedication, so much sacrifice, so much hard work. But in the, I promise you, when you put in that hard work, three, five, 10 years down the line, it's gonna be insane. Like I know that the next five years are gonna be incredible. You have to be prepared to put in the work every day. And you know, a lot of people aren't, aren't willing to do this stuff and that's, that's fair enough, that's completely fine. But if you want the 1% life, you have to be willing to do what 99% of people aren't willing to do, hence why I'm in here. Um, so yeah, it's a lot bigger than me than just like impacting myself and building a foundation for myself. I actually wanna you know, impact future generations, leave an impact, leave a legacy. So it's a lot deeper than that for me. So that's my why that always drives me. But um, yeah, you have to be willing to do this stuff, sacrifice for the short term to be able to live that life longer term so quick rant there but um yeah overall we done for today so yeah catch you guys tomorrow morning and which is where i'll start the saturday prep speak to you all soon boom welcome back to the video so it's now saturday morning late saturday morning and i'm about to dig into some asr so basically that's advanced self-review and what this basically is, is that I'm gonna dig into the trades that I've taken throughout last week um, and dig into any trades that I've missed as well. I don't think, off the top of my head, I don't think I've missed any trades, but I will see. We'll go through that and we'll dig into that further. But what I'm probably gonna do, if I talk you through it as I'm going through it, I'm probably not gonna be able to focus to the best of my ability. So I'm probably gonna do a time lapse and then talk you through it after it, after I've basically done the entire process. So that's gonna be good. And then later today, we're gonna to get into some more prep. Um, you've seen the watch list and the wildcards that I formed last night. What I'm gonna be doing with that is going back through those um, pairs, making sure they're in the right order and making sure they're in the right watch list as well to start with. And then I'm gonna be forecasting in detail. So making sure that my mind's ready ahead of time, making sure that I'm painting the setups onto the charts so that I know exactly what I'm looking for, where I'm gonna enter, where I'm gonna manage the trades. So that's gonna be super helpful. But um, yeah, let's dig straight in. If you don't have a reason to breathe, why even live? These battles cause our impressions of everything that it is.
so we have finished the ASR process. So the main takeaway, I'm going to show you in a minute actually, but the main takeaway for me in November really is actually the corrective weeks versus the, the impulsive weeks. So I think I talked about this at the start of the video, but we tend to get impulsive periods within the month and then we tend to get corrective periods within the month. What I tend to be doing right now is that I'm capitalizing really well during the impulsive conditions, but then the corrective conditions shape up and I'm still applying that same pressure to the market in which I, I I'm tr still have my foot on the gas essentially. I'm um, trying to catch the trades, but then I'm just taking subpar value trades and I just need to be avoiding that because I'm giving some of the profit back to the market in which I can reduce, refine a little bit further. So. So that's definitely the one thing that stands out throughout November. I'm gonna be putting in processes to actually refine this further. Haven't fully got it figured out just yet, but I'll keep you in the loop. But that's what I'm working on right now. Um, but yeah, I'll show you some of the trades that I've taken right now. So let's have a quick look. So we're taking a look at two of the trades that I've taken last week. So both trades on Pound at Aussie. Um, so I wanna go over this one first. So date of this one was 28th of November, 2019. It resulted in a break even. Was it a high prob or valid? High prob trade. Was it congruent with my trading plan? Yes, it was. And then a little summary here, what I usually do with my ASI is have a little summary based on around uh, why I actually took the trade in the first place. So the confluence factors, the analysis behind it. So with this in mind, we can see that with this, with this Pound Aussie trade, we've got price was at the outer structure of the high time frames. Therefore, we were in a significant area of value for the selling opportunity after breaking the larger tumble top region. One hour chart, price formed the highest test and came back up later to fill the wick, forming a one hour double top in the process, which is where I got involved in the trade. Set the entry below the 15 minute phase line and was triggered into position on the break. So what I mean by that is here. So one hour chart was looking like that. Right, so let's talk about the one hour wick. Price came back up to fill that wick, which often happens, and then we start to drop to the downside. Use the 15 minute as a filter in this situation to get involved in the trade, just a little bit more accurately, and we can see here that, right, that ascending channel acting as the impulse of the correction to the downside on the on the 15 minute chart. What I basically did is just set my entry all below, and then got triggered in pretty much, I think it was an hour, an hour or two later, so that's that. Um, what I tend to do after the trade analysis part is have a little section on psychology. So this is how I know that whether my psychology is on point or whether it's just slightly off. So earlier on in the month, it was slightly off a little bit. So by knowing that I can then refine that process a little bit further, but we can see here, hopefully you can still see that. Yeah, here, right? Psychology was solid. I was prepared, prepared in advance for this position. Therefore, there was no hesitation when the setup materialized. So that's solid. That's good signs in my eyes. Um, so nothing to go into too much detail there. But if there is something that's outlined, whether it's external in influences or whatever it is within my life that's going on, I'll write that in there because that's such a key part. And if there's one section where I'm going to go in more detail, it's the psychology part because that's, that's one of the most important things. Usually on trades, I'll have lessons learned because these trades fit exactly to my plan. I knew what I was looking at it for in advance um, and they, they were just congruent to my plan. I There wasn't really any lessons to be learned in this situation. So, and sometimes you're not always gonna get that. So that's, this was one of the situations. What did I forecast in advance? So I was looking at this. So basically after we, after we started to form this ascending type structure, we broke to the upside. I was looking for an ascending formation to take to the downside. We got that. A little bit of a variation on that, but we still got the ascending nature. So that was that. Management of this trade. So we take a look at this. So at one point in time, it was running around about 3.2% profit. And it's arguable in most circumstances that I'll, I'll lock in profit at this point due to the fact that I'm already running in 3%. However, because price was at the outer structure and the higher time frames were involved, I was happy to leave this a break even because sometimes what we often get is price will just trickle around, hover around a little bit before the bigger move commits to itself. So I was just being a little bit leading with my, with my stop in this situation and taking the risk off the table and I just left it a break even. So totally happy with that. Now moving on to the second position. So once again, pound Aussie short. This was one of my main focuses for the week. For the week. Um, date taken 29th of November 2019, resulted in a break even. Once again, high prop trade, congruent my plan. Yes, it was. Trade analysis so, following the first impulsive move, price then formed a typical tight bear flag correction to take to the downside. I took this as a standard reduced risk entry and was triggered in shortly after setting the order. So, psychology was on point. I planned the trade in advance multiple times, hence why I hone in on forecasting quite a lot due to its importance. Therefore, when it, the trade physically materialized, I knew how I was gonna enter the trade and therefore took the position. 
Once again, no lessons learned here because it just stuck to my plan. I knew exactly what I was looking for, so nothing really to take away from this trade as such. In terms of forecasting, we can look at this. So following that first impulsive move, this is what I was talking about. We had that bear flag correction, which is once again within my plan. So I was looking to take that as a reduced risk on the break here. How did that materialize? So higher time frame is still intact. Very, very, very similar, right? And then the lower time frames, this is what formed. So basically price stalled around during the evening, early hours of the morning, once I woke up, then set the entry order below, and then it was triggered in in the early hours of the morning. I think it was around about 5, 6 a.m. Um, and took the trade. So that was perfect in terms of how I managed the trade. So price impulsively broke structure, right? Meaning that I could take my risk off the table, move my stop to break even, and then following on from that, price then retraced. So when it does this with these type of type of entries, this gives me a clear definition of what's about to happen next. So this was giving me early signs that we were gonna develop into a larger structure, but still the bias and the higher time frame is still intact. So still looking for downside opportunities. So that was the trades that I took last week. In regards to what structure's looking right now, we can see that nothing's really changed. So here's where I took the entries here. So first entry was there, second entry was there. We haven't really, we haven't really developed too much further. So all we've basically done is form this. So once mm -hmm. again, still looking for more downside opportunities heading into the week ahead, but we've just formed this, right? With this ascending structure. So we now have got the one, two, looking for that third touch ideally here, right? And we've formed that clear middle section. No surprise we've formed that within the pattern to give that the completion of the pattern. So if we just say, for example, we just correct up like so, like this as a typical example, if we correct up to these highs here, that's a no brainer within my plan. I will be in from that trade from the top. So the one, two, three, high prop trade at the outer structure, and then ultimately looking for the first correction within the move as well to get involved in the sell. So that's looking absolutely fire. Cannot wait to see how that develops, but ultimately there's a lot of trades lining up really. So in terms of ASR, that's pretty much done for the day, which is good. Um, smooth process entirely. Um, but I think the, the main thing to, to take away from this video in terms of advanced self-review and actually tracking your trades that, you've that you're taking and the trades that you missed. A lot of people miss out the part where you should be documenting the trades that you've missed, right? The reason being, I've talked about this on previous videos, but in order to treat trading like a business, right, you need to track growth. You, you've no gauge of how, of how well you're doing compared to what you could be doing in accordance with your plan if you don't track the trades that you missed. So what I mean by that is, if you're currently hovering around, let's say 5% profit, right, but the trades that you've missed equal 15%, right, that's net 20%, but you're currently missing out on 15% profit. Now, with you currently hovering at 5%, if you weren't to have the missed trades equaling 15%, you have no gauge to go off. So you don't know really how well you're performing. Yes, you have the trades that you're taking to track, but you don't have any gauge of what's congruent to your plan to then track that performance. So how you do that and how you achieve peak performance in this, I believe, is that you track missed trades. And these are not just trades that, you know, you find anywhere in the market and that you just, you would have taken it in hindsight. It's not about that. It's about trades that specifically fit your plan, but for some reason or another, you just haven't taken it. You haven't executed the position, right? That's the key. So it's important to find that gauge and then you're able to then say, okay, well, cool. I'm at 5% profit right now. How, how can I go from 5% profit to then 20%? It's about closing that gap between the five and the 15. So you start to then reverse engineer the process and be like, cool, well, what processes can I put in place? How can I make processes more efficient um, to then get the outcome that's, that's desired? So that's the key thing with that. But um, yeah, we are finished with ASR right now. Gonna dig into some prep. So we're about to get into some forecasting for the week ahead. This is where I'm gonna go into a lot more detail in terms of the paintbrush tool and trading view. You've probably seen me do it before. And the reason why we do that is just because you get it on a second nature level of actually get it ingrained within your mind. Um, so we're gonna do that a few times over and prep for the top six in the wild cards. So that's gonna be fire. But yeah, just need to stay on the ball. Next week is looking insane. And it's probably one of the cleanest weeks that I've seen in a while. So it's gonna be interesting. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into it. So in regards to the watch list, I'm gonna utilize something called auto suggestion. So you'll probably hear me talking out loud and don't worry, I'm not going insane. It's, it's the technique that I like to use. So Napoleon Hill talks about this a little bit in Think and Grow Rich, the book. 
um, but it can be applied into trading. So how I use it is that I, I talk to myself out loud whilst I'm on the charts, just to point out different setups, what I'm looking for, especially in the higher time frames, lower time frames, what I'm looking for in terms of entries, setups, management, and it just helps clarify what I'm looking for on the charts for the week ahead. So I know that the majority of my prep happens on the weekend in terms of the higher time frame structure, so I need to make sure that I'm fully ready in terms of mentally. So this is one way that I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna show you, show you an example right now on Pound Aussie. So I'm gonna try and get in flow as much as possible. So let's do it. So any ascending nature around these areas, that's when I'll be utilizing the 15 minute. So I will look for a one hour retrace or I'll be taking up the break of a 15 minute phase line. So I'll drop to the 15 minute and I'll be adding up that, the 15 minute to use as an accurate form of a filter. My entry will, be, will be below structure, likely be likely be around about 35 to 30 pip stop judging by previous pound, pound Aussie behavior. To the downside, to the bottom of the pattern, we've got 8% and that's just 8% for a short term trade, right? And then we've got the bigger trade in the cards. So this could be a really nice play. So 35, if that's 30, then we've got 10%. If that's 40, then we've got 7.6. So that's looking insane. So that's what that's my first entry into the trade. So we look to take that from the top if that materializes and then we'll likely get the correction early on in the move. So whether that's a hover or whether it's up here remains to be seen. But once again, drop it to the 15 minute to use that as a filter, right? I'll be looking at this <clears throat> in more detail, utilize the 15 minute as an accurate form of entry. Once again, likely a 40 pip stop, 40 to 35, right? Down to the low, we've got 4.2. And then in total, we've got over 10% profit just in those two trades, right? And that's just for a short term. If that plays out to the downside, like we're anticipating it too, then that's a 13% position. So that's looking really nice. And how I'm gonna manage that trade is that if it's impulsive, it's gonna be pretty simple to manage, but my first target will be here. The reason being is that this can, this can be an area at the beginning of this correction, that price actually turns around and forms a deeper structure. So how I'm gonna manage that is that if we move to the downside, start forming continuations, right? I'm gonna be paying super close attention to these areas at the beginning of the correction once we approach it. So if we start to get any sort of deep, clear descent information that happens to break this low, then that'll be an entry point of me in terms of managing this trade progressively more, more aggressive, and then we're looking to lock in around about 4% depending on the overall move, right? However, if that breaks through and forms a retrace and retraces back into the pattern, once again, very simple thing, lock in profit here, or, we just completely move to the downside. And if so, then I'll just lock in profit accordingly and we'll see what develops with that trade. So Pound Aussie's looking interesting. So with that, right, I, pro I went in a lot more detail there to just explain the basics of my thinking. So I wouldn't normally go into the into detail with the basics, but that's pretty much why I do it. You can see just by talking to myself out loud, like coming to those entries that I know exactly what I'm looking for and I planned it like twice, right? So. You think about that, right? If you plan that three, four, five times over the course of a weekend, by the time you get into the week ahead, like there's no guessing game. It's so simple. It really is simple, I think. But you only know how simple it is once you give it a go. So give it a go for yourself. Start to apply auto suggestion into your planning preparation process, and I guarantee it'll help you out. So hopefully that helps. But yeah, gonna run through all the pairs right now and um, catch up with you guys soon. A voice that reached a hundred million people. I tell them there's a reason that we're all created equal. Cause some decide to be great and some decide a sequel to an average person's life is simply what they want to be. So you make your decision. All I know is what I'm given. Won't define the life I lead or the way I dwell in existence. I've seen a greater image on the walls of where I'm living. And the words twisted and scripted remind me of something written. Faith is a gift that is given down to the people. If one believes it, one receives it. It's given. Even if it is needed, don't ever think you're trapped in a life that you never wanted. Your options are infinite, that's some mathematical logic. I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth. These lyrics define my prayers and these battles cause I'm a church. I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm speaking for what it's worth. These lyrics define my prayers and these battles cause I'm a church.
Hey, so the watch list has stayed the same as last night, so pretty much everything is the same. I finished up the prep now in terms of today. Whether I run through that one more time tonight remains to be seen. It, it totally depends, to be completely honest. That's just an extra step that I could maybe take. But in terms of the foundation that is set now, it's looking really nice. Um, and the watch list is looking fire, like I've said a few times before. It's looking really good. It's honestly been the cleanest the cleanest looking week in a while that I've seen so it's, it's going to be interesting I need to make sure that my full foot is on the pedal so it's going to be interesting very excited to get into the month and this is where December comes out into play actually because a lot of people think it's December it's the holiday season this is where people are taking time off but the truth is if you actually back test data from December right back test last year in terms of December we had some really really nice trades so when people take it easy for Christmas New Year things like that you still have to put the foot on the gas make sure that you're preparing make sure that you're ready make sure that you're still trading because the truth is you may hear these false beliefs on social media that December is a low liquidity month stuff like this but until you actually back test the data for yourself do not trust anything like that I think judging by the setups we had last year and 2017 yeah, we're in for a good, we're in for a really good month. So now's more important than ever to keep, sh keep make sure you're prepared, make sure that your foot's on the gas and take full advantage. But that's it for Saturday. So I'm going to join you tomorrow and I'm going to be finalizing my prep a lot more. So more accountability, more data and more screenshots. So that's going to be good. And I'm going to talk you through the entire process. So yeah, speak to you guys tomorrow. What's going on guys? So welcome back. It's now a Sunday morning. So we're just about to dig into a Sunday market breakdown. So basically my Sunday in terms of trading anyway consists of two different things. So first and foremost, I'll go through the Sunday market breakdown. So what this basically is, is a, I'm being aware, I'm trying to talk, talk slowly because people keep saying I keep talking too fast. So bear with me. But um, yeah, the Sunday market breakdown consists of a breakdown of the top six and the wild cards and all the requested pairs that the Falcon team put together for the week ahead. So basically what I do is I have my analysis set beforehand and then I'll just compare my analysis to um, Mark and see what, you know, the, any discrepancies that I have, um, I'll be aware of that and then try and learn from it. But yeah, we're about to dig into that. And then the second part is just gonna be more prep. So in terms of what I talked about yesterday, get some screenshots together, get everything sorted, and then ultimately just get myself in the executional mode back as a trader for the week ahead again. So yeah, let's dig into the Sunday market breakdown and I'll take you with me. So pretty much ready to go now with the Sunday market breakdown. So I'm about to get into this once again. So I, li I watched this for the first time last night. Um, so what I do basically the first time I watch a piece of content, I'll just watch it. So charts won't be open. I'll have this on full screen. The second time, this is the three step process, by the way, it helps with learning material and actually ingraining content. The second time I go through the content, this is where I have broke both screens open. I'll watch it at the same time as I'm doing my analysis and then I'll just compare myself to the actual content. The third time is that I'll just refine it further. So I'll make sure that I've not missed anything out. And this is usually when I will watch it on a, on a Monday morning in regards to the Sunday market breakdown. So I'll watch, probably watch this going into tomorrow morning um, and just refine that further just to make sure that I'm not missing anything out. And that's the kind of weekend process in terms of that. So it's gonna be good to get into this. How I usually like to work it in regards to the actual pairs. So this week, for example, I've got four pairs out of six that Mark's got. So with that in mind, what I like to do is compare my analysis like I said before in regards to the actual pairs on the watch list. So I've learned over time, I think just through learning content and things that my style is, is quite similar to Mark's. So that works out nicely for me in the respect that I can use it as a gauge. So if Mark's looking at something different on his watch list, then I might be able to be like, okay, well, I can start to reverse engineer the process and this is what I've done since the beginning pretty much. Um, and just be like, oh, cool, well, why has got, why's Mark got that? Is he seeing something different? Has he got any, you know, is he utilized pattern separation in a, in a different way to me? So I can just start to reverse engineer that process and that ultimately just helps me improve over and over again, time and time again, throughout weeks and weeks of, of repetition. So that helps. But what I usually do is, I really like to keep the independence. What I used to do is that if, for example, I used to have let's say four pairs out of six that Mark has, right? I would then switch those over completely to what Mark is seeing. Um, but now I don't like to do that. I'd like to keep the independence the same. So what I usually find is that five out of six pairs is usually um, a good gauge in terms of average of, of how my pairs can grow into Mark. So, you know, he may have a different pair now and again, but usually it's pretty much similar. This week, he's I've got four pairs out of six that he's got. So a little on the low end, which is cool. Every, everyone sees stuff differently, so it's just about learning from that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep the same watch list that I had, 
But what I will do is make sure that those are the pairs that Marcus Senior is actually on my wildcards list as well, which is which happens to play out quite nicely because they are anyway. So that's how I'm going to approach that. But yeah, I like to keep the independence because in the past, I would totally switch my watch list over to what Mark was seen, but then you just lose the independence factor, I think, in that in the weekly process. And then, you know, if if you you're seen on something on the pair that's congruent to your plan, it may not be congruent to Mark's plan. So you have to bear that in mind. There is going to be discrepancies within styles. So that's why I like to do that. But without further ado, I'm going to get into the Sunday market breakdown and compare my analysis pretty much right now. Then yes, it's only a three to one to here, but you're taking it in the in the in the anticipation this could actually break a lot higher and then break through so i'll still be looking to take that trade as it does have that minimum of three to one but let's see you know if this trickles further we see trades like this before where they break out of this structure and what do they do they trickle their way down like so and they just become part of the larger formation if it does that we make it a double bottom within the structure so then look for the buy so there's a few ways and this is why we shouldn't have any any fomo at this stage remember fomo only occurs from a lack of clarity so what does that mean well we have the fear of missing out when we lack the understanding of opportunity so if you think of it like that, the more you know about the strategy and the more you've backtested to understand the potential, then the less likely you have of the fear of missing out. Why? Because you'll see how much potential and how many entries there really are. If you don't know that, then you will have the fear of missing out. It's just you versus you. How do you become a better version of yourself in 2020 and constantly improve, but be dedicated to that? So very, very excited to see the growth that we make, but the preparation starts now. So very, very key on that. So we are back, that was eventful. Basically my car broke down so I had to fix the battery, get a new battery on that. But um, yeah, it is what it is. It took a little bit of a little bit of time. I think it was gone like a few hours. Yeah, it's now just gone 6 p.m. So it's gone like a few hours doing that. And it took a little bit of time, but it is what it is. Life happens sometimes, you just, you just have to deal with it. So we're about to get back to it right now. Um, this is the last part of prep. So I, I love this part of the week for me. This is my direction during the week. So. I think the best option in terms of daily watch list is to going to be a, do, to do an entirely different video on that just because I, I can just specifically get into that topic whereas what I'm going to do right now is just a weekly overview um, because this is the last part of prep for the weekend. So how I usually do it, I have a platform called Notion. It's free to use completely um, unless you go over the storage limit. So I'm well over the storage limit um, with the documents that I have on Notion. So I naturally just upgraded my plan and stuff but it's still good. I, I love using it and it's just free to use for most people. Um, so yeah, what I usually do, I have a template set up for the week ahead, which I'm gonna run over in a little bit, but basically that's to outline my top six for the week ahead and then the wild cards. And under, I'll have a section on screenshots. So I take a screenshot of the daily time frame on each pair and I'll take a, a few screenshots normally of the one hour chart as to what I'm looking for in terms of the trade. So this is where you'll see me use things like annotations to mark on the chart the text of what I'm looking for telling myself ahead of time what I'm looking for in that pair um, and the reason why I take screenshots it's not a necessity for sure but I like to keep it as like an accountability factor I also use it in ASR um, and it just gives me more direction than markets for the week ahead so for example if I'm looking at I don't know let's, let's say dollar cad short right I know that cool it may be three or four days away, I'm not really looking at it until we get into those areas, but I'm just paying attention, keeping my eyes on it um, in case that setup occurs. But it gives me direction, it clears me, gives me clear clarity going into the week ahead for that specific pair and have that across the board on top six and wild cards. So totally, in total, I have like six, eight, 10 pairs in total. So in total, it's not a time consuming uh, process. Probably takes me 45 minutes to an hour, I'd say tops. Um, because I've done all my prep, I've done all my prep in terms of I know what I'm looking for in each pair now up to this stage. So it's more so a case of cool, let's go onto the daily chart on each pair, let's go onto the one hour chart, let's take the screenshots and just cement it into my mind a little bit more. But apart from that, I know what I'm looking for going into the week ahead. So this is where you see you see the weekend process coming into fruition now. So I've done the prep on Friday, I've done the prep on Saturday, now it's Sunday, I've done it a few times over. It's more so cemented into my mind. So now it's just putting the final pieces together of the jigsaw. One thing to hone in on as well, like I just mentioned just then, I've done the watch list more than three times, right? And the reason for that is just to cement it into my mind. Um, and also things change over the course of the weekend. You may look at a watch list on Friday, right? But your your mind's in a state of, 
you've been in the markets all week, you, you see things slightly different. Whereas you're fresh on a weekend, you've had time to recharge and um, re-energize. And then you look at the charts again on a, on a Saturday and Sunday, and you may have a slightly different perspective, or you may see one thing on a pair that's slightly different to wait to how you saw it on a Friday. That's the reason. So that's primarily the reason. And then just the holding the focus, um, and just to cement the setups into my mind basically. So that's the reason I do it three times over, but we are about to get into it now. So I'm gonna walk you along th with me and then I'm um, show you the exact process. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I ain't the first with the curse, with the thirst that I wanna be better, not worse, man, it hurts. I'm on the earth with my words and I put them all together in cert cause I wanna have worth. Working hella hard till they put me in the dirt. Gonna go far, man, listen to my words. Gonna be a star, man, life's like a blur. When you're working this hard, yeah, you get what you deserve. Yeah, I ain't taking a backseat, I'm passing. And anybody else who is rapping, I'm nasty. Ain't nobody able to catch me, they gasping. They cannot compare, they can't match me, I'm at half speed. I got your girl and she so we're finished up with prep, so I want to walk you through it right now. So here's the overall template that I'm looking at. So I have a weekly forecast within here, all the pairs that I'm looking at, then I have the breakdown. So we have the top six and wildcards breakdown. So let's have a look at, I want to show you one pair. Let's look at, let's look at pound dozzy, right? Let's look at pound dozzy. So pair number five, pound dozzy short for a potential longer term hold. So on the daily chart, so let's have a look at the daily chart. I've just expanded this overall structure. So now we're at the top of the bigger structure. We have this one, two, three. You can see we've been squeezing within this overall ascending structure for a while. Now we're at this pivotal point at the top of the structure in which we can get that move to the downside. However, bearing in mind that we can also push up due to the fact that this is quite a big correction. And what we often find is that when the corrections are as large as the impulse, these can quite often become neutral and just break up. So have that in mind as well. But for this, for the time being, just looking for selling opportunities. Here's what I'm looking at. One hour chart, we can see we have this first touch, second touch, and third touch. Ideally looking for a risk entry in these areas to then take to the downside, whether that's a one hour retrace, whether that's an ascending structure, I'll be looking for those typical entry points to take that to the downside. So that's what I'm looking at on that. Once we have that, I'll then be looking for the first correction within the move, as outlined here, to then take that to the downside. So I know that these corrections following the first impulsive move are the highest probability within nature. So happy to take that, that's within plan, and I'll be taking that to the downside. So that's pretty much it. And then you can see here, I have a little section on trade analysis. So you can see here, pound Aussie, a significant area of value to be looking for the sells to the downside with the longer term view in mind. This structure can break to the upside due to how deep the overall structure is. However, for the time being, looking primarily for downside movement, risk entry three touch channel on the one hour retrace for the sell. With the typical entry points, I will also be looking to build on this position early into the move with tight bear flag correction continuation should this develop. So here you can see that I've just outlined what exactly what I'm looking at and you can see how this essentially acts as accountability for myself, especially if I recheck this multiple times throughout the week. But that's pretty much an example of what I'm looking for. I will leave this template in the description for you guys. I know there's a lot of people that struggle with templates and they want, um, you know, just simple templates to use and utilize within the trading. So feel free to happily use this. Um, I've refined this process time and time again, and it's very, very simple, but I just like to use this. So hopefully that helps you as well. I'll leave everything down in the description for you to check out and use. Let me know how you deal with that. So in a nutshell, that is the routine. It feels like I've been filming all weekend, but I actually haven't. But that is the um, trading routine. So it may seem complicated if you're new starting out and you're first watching this video, but when you break it down into simple terms, it's actually not that complicated. And yeah, it's one of those things that's, that becomes second nature, especially because, because I've been doing it for, for quite a long time now. Um, but the biggest advice I would give you in terms of structure, in terms of routine, would just be don't rush it and don't add too many things at once. So if you're looking to build out your routine in terms of the weekend or during the week, start adding small things and then you'll see that compound effect over time. But definitely tr don't try and combat too many things at once because that can just be a recipe for disaster. So focus on one thing, master that, then move on. But yeah, about to dig into the daily watch list, will be, which will be an entirely different video. That'll be good. Hopefully that'll offer value, but hopefully you've enjoyed this video and um, gained some sort of value from it. Let me know in the comment section if you have. 
Um, all the templates will be down in the description for you to use for free. And um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. So yeah, have a great week and I'll speak to you soon. With the, 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 with